we left off, we were traveling to, the, you guys were traveling to Valneva. We didn't go there. But at the beginning of the session, they got there. Yeah. Um, nothing, nothing untoward happened on the road. Well, those Tarek uh, lizard men showed up. Or uh, uh, dragon men showed up. Well, they could, well, that was last time. Mm. Yeah. It was like, were they, they, there was sort of a thing that happened, but... It was going to be an encounter, but we had like 50 archers with us. Mm. I remember that. And they were like, yeah, maybe we better not start a fight with 50 archers. So, we just passed on through. We reached Balmain. And the city is big, bustling city, yeah, super, a, super chaotic center of adventure. You know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and um, even as they're just on the outskirts, they have people coming up trying to sell them stuff. Mm-hmm. Starts out as like a shanty town and gets more and more distinct, but just there's a giant amount of adventure or um, a mark, mark, um, commerce, mm-hmm. and uh, there's. Um, there's people shouting, hawking their various um, bounties, and there's lots of bounties posted. Mm-hmm. Chandra's well, boards stuff. everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're sort of like huddling together because, you know, someone's going to try and pickpocket us or start a fight or something. You know, it's, it's, it's that sort of place. There's going to be something going on. So we're sort of. Sticking close to, um, I keep forgetting his name. Barkir. Barkir. Why? He's the leader of the expedition. Yeah. Uh, And he's returning to home base essentially. Uh, And so we're going to tag along with him. Um, And so he wants to go report back to his financier. Um, He was like the was he not? He wasn't the mayor or something. He was a high mucky muck. Um, he called him the regent. The regent, yeah. Anyway, he was the financier for his expedition, so he's going to report back to him and say, sorry, kind of kind of blew up. Maybe that felt like, hey, can I have some more money so I can buy this Cortex thing? Mm-hmm. And go on another expedition. And <laughs> the regent wasn't going to give him a whole lot of extra money. Ah. Because um, he was like, yeah, well, I'll fund another expedition, but I'm not going to let you buy the... I'm not going to just hand you the money to buy the Cortex or whatever. Hmm. Which they mostly observed from the outside. Yeah. He brought them in, but they had to wait outside. Yeah. And we were polite, so we stayed outside. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. They, so they went in there, they had to wait for 45 minutes, they yep. sat in the waiting room waiting. <laughs> they sat outside while they were talking, they were yep. shouting, and then bark your storms out of the room. We were well behaved. So Barker comes back out and says, sorry guys, uh, he didn't give me funding to just outright buy your Cortex from you, but I want to give you a fair price for it. So what I can do is I can give you some money, an amount of money that's that's appropriate for fourth level adventurers, uh, and... I can give you this magic item I've got that's really super cool, and I hate to part with it, but I'll trade it to you in exchange for uh, the Cortex, because that's also super cool. So we go to Varkir's place to check out this item he wants to trade us. And he's got this, like, room full of oud, uh, oud items and artifacts and stuff like yeah. that. And as soon as we walk in, everything lights up and starts moving and, and dancing and whatever mm-hmm. new stuff does because we brought the cortex into the room. Right. And, and he's all like, oh. Because <laughs> all this stuff is, is like precious things. Yeah. He doesn't know what they do and stuff, and now they're doing stuff. So he super wants the cortex. Mm-hmm. So he goes to get the item. Uh, it's a folded up piece of paper. Uh, it's a map. Uh, it's the, the Oud equivalent of Google Maps. Uh, it has uh, their their whole old uh, civilization mapped out in there. Um, and Varkir is like, yeah, that is really super awesome, but unfortunately it's really blurry and faded and fuzzy and doesn't give a lot of detail. 
uh, you see, and he opens it up to, to show us how sucky it is, and it's like intricately detailed. It shows like individual buildings, all that sort of stuff, because the cortex is charged it up, <laughs> and he's like. Oh. Because he's a treasure hunter, he's, he's a researcher, or whatever you want to call it, into Ood, and now he has the map of everything. <laughs> and he's offering to trade it to us for the, the, the Cortex. Uh, and which makes the map go. Which makes the map awesome. And, and so we're like, no, 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 no. This is dumb, you can't do this. You can't... I mean, the cortex and the map need to go together, and you need to have the map because you're a, a treasure hunter. It well, doesn't he, make any kind of sense for you to give us this thing. He, he did... I, I think you guys maybe missed this point, but he did test that the, the map continued working outside of the range of the cortex. Like, it charges yeah. it. No, they didn't miss Even, that. He, no, it didn't. Even so, we're not the people who are going to be able to make use of this map like he can. You know, we're, we're not um, uh, ood archaeologists. Oodchaeologists. We're not oodchaeologists. Um, you know, he, he's the guy that organizes expeditions to go and get stuff. He needs this map. <laughs> he, he needs to have this map. It's going to be awesome for him. Um, and so, we, we were like saying, no, no, just keep it, man. Just keep it. Um, we'll find something else you can do for us. You know, you can owe us. Uh, you can, kind of bad there's, owing there's, there's, there's other junk around here maybe we can have. You know, we're not, you know, like, oh, hey, this thing's cool. It spins. You know, how about that? It's the sacred yeah. golden goblin. Yeah. <laughs> But he, so, he, he would rather not owe them. He would rather take them. I mean, if they insist on him keeping both, he'll keep both. But. The, uh, the suggestion that I made to him, uh, <coughs> that I thought was actually a pretty good one, but the party didn't go with it, so whatever, uh, was uh, you keep the map, you use the map, and find some awesome prospect for uh, rune exploration. Uh, you know, some you know, super awesome rune out there that no one knows about, so yeah. it's all still full of loot. Uh, and then take us on the expedition, uh, and we get the lion's share of the loot. And then we'll call it even. You know? And then he'll still have the map and stuff, and in the future keep on doing more looting. You know? That, that seemed like a, a good way to go. But, uh, uh, we, we ended up, eventually... Accepting the map provisionally, <laughs> we're like, okay, we'll let you load it to us. <laughs> That's what he sort of wanted. Like, yeah. he wanted to sell. It. He wanted to do it too, but like, he asked you, "Can you please not sell it to anyone else?" Yeah. <laughs> Once I have money, I'd like to buy it back from him. Yeah. And we were. That was a really. It was a really weird. Like, I'd like to sell this to you, but you only got a promise not to sell it to anyone else. And we, and we were like, "That's not what selling is." Well, but now that it's loading, okay, we can do that. <laughs> we ultimately accepted this map. I'm really not too sure if we're going to be able to put it to much use. But. Well, they said, they actually said, it seems like that's the direction it's going, because they actually, I don't know, when they left, they didn't say they were going to take it. You guys said, you guys said, well, we'll, 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 we'll think about it. When we leave the city, we'll yeah. come back, and if we're going to take it, we'll take it. Mm -hmm. So it has not yet yeah. officially been taken. Yeah. Um, after we sort of sorted that out, um, then it was time we did some shopping because he did give us some money because he had some money. Um, and we were in need of, of equipment. So we went shopping. Um, and then we told every We sort of had a little... Uh, you know, what did we all buy so that we know what uh, what our capabilities are and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that? And Prost uh, has got a good armor, right? Mm -hmm. And on the way into town, he bought a bag of like 200 oh. potions, <laughs> not like 50 potions, healing yeah. potions from an urchin. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> 
100 potions for only 500 gold. It was a super awesome deal. It was fantastic. Were they much smaller? They were small potions? They were like, I, think, was, I don't think this one's a potion, guys. I think this one's just grease. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this one's urine. Yeah, definitely yeah. urine. Yeah. But apparently, <laughs> in amongst that 100 potions, there was uh, 10 good potions. Uh -huh. So... It worked out that he bought a fair deal. The guy that was trying to rip him off had uh, had wound up sweetening the deal with real potions. So Cricket got a couple of magic items that are that are useful for the party as a whole. <laughs> In the I think it was during the shopping. Um, we started meeting a lot of strange people. There were some you met on the way in, but... Yeah. We were sort of focused on the way in. Because there was a guy who tried to uh, buy cricket for his uh, for his establishment. Uh, he liked her look. Yeah, I advised the party that cricket was worth at least six, 7,000 gold. Yeah, he, off he offered 300 gold for cricket. Yeah, <laughs> 300 gold. I, I would advise you to take that as insulting, Cricket said. To, uh, the party. She, she was advising them on you know, how to get a good deal for her uh, if they so chose. I'm trying to sort of keep track in my mind of a, of a, a reasonable Exchange, market, right? market price for Cricket as she keeps leveling up. Right. Uh, and I figure 7000 for a fourth level bard, that seems pretty... Uh, it might actually be a bit cheap, but... Uh, well, look at the price for a... Uh, it should be at least double the value of a mount of that level. Mm. Uh, for horses, it was, what was it, 10 horses for a, a slave? Well, that, I worked, that I figured out? If you look at, like, there's different mounts like that come yeah. out, like, whatever level, and they'll have yeah. a price. Uh, yeah, the the way I came up with Cricket's original first level price was to look at in olden times what the, uh, in the U.S. Uh, what the price of a slave was right. relative to a horse, and it was ten times a horse. Um, and a horse is like the first level mount, right? So maybe ten times a mount price is a good one. Yeah, I could look at that. Of course, then that that considered... the mount price might be the same as the magic item price oh. of the same level. Okay, but so in that case, seven thousand was way cheap. Yeah, yeah, it would be very expensive. Well, when you consider what a bard can do, it's true. If cricket was a magic item, yeah. But there's also supply and demand. It seems like the basic. Well, cricket comes with magic items. No, those are those aren't part of the package oh, deal. Okay. If, no. the, if the party had sold cricket, she would have immediately started taking off her stuff and like. Right. Okay. Okay, okay guys. Uh, well, accessories are extra. <laughs> what if the party had said go one nude cricket? It was probably what he wanted. Anyway, well, anyway, that guy, that guy just basically approached the party and they're like, "You're an idiot," and laugh, and that was on the way. Yeah. Out. I mean, three hundred gold? Come on, Brian. Like half. I'm not too interested in those. Okay. So anyway, our party being the sort of party that it is, we would go into a store, or a, I think it was a tavern in this case or something. And They're all, all sort of mixed together. Yeah, very, there's all this stuff, you know, we're going to go buy magic items, look for quests and stuff, but, but no, as we go in, John mentions as just flavor text that there's some old guy in the, on a rocking chair in the back. It's like friggin' Eve. Well, actually, he uh, came up because you guys, because someone, someone recognized. Oh yeah, so, oh right, you're right. Yeah, there was a guy who said that. Yeah. And, yeah, there was a guy who Aurora was trying to convince that cricket was nice, and then meanwhile in the background there was some guy in a rocking chair. Oh. Only goody, basically dead. And so we spent like half an hour doing diplomacy checks and stuff, trying to convince this guy that he, the, the the Empire of Flowers wasn't so bad and cricket was nice and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's like, there's no point to that. But we had fun. And in the end, he didn't spit on us. Yeah. 
Cricket made a really are just so gosh darn nice. Yeah. yeah. Cricket made a super high. I was like, this guy is just, there's no way. He's just going to spit in her face. But then she rolled insane diplomacy. Yeah. So I got like an 18 on the die. So awesome. I said, he, he, you can tell, he thinks about spitting in your face and then decides not to. And Cricket was like, yes. It's great. Progress. If I can be not spit in the face here of all places, there was this guy who kept showing up over and over, trying to get us to to courier a package into the Empire of Flowers. Mm. First, he just he approached seemed, Cricket and like he, he seemed very this disreputable. Package. I'll pay you three three thousand gold. When she refused and said, "This is my owner," he turned to Aurora, who happened to be with her. I think we wound up offering like 10,000 gold pieces for Cricket. Yeah, yeah. Once, um, when, when Cricket said, oh, here's Aurora, my, here's my owner, he said, oh, so you're okay with slavery? Fine, I'll buy, I'll buy her off you. I'll pay you 3,000 gold. And he ended up going up to, I think, 14,000 gold. 14, wow. I do remember getting a little bit nervous because it was over Cricket's asking price. Mm. I was like, huh, I wonder if Aurora's going to go for this. But no. She didn't go for it. Yeah, your fourth level? I think a fourth level magic item is $800. Dollars. 800 gold? 800 gold, so $8,000. 8000 I had, I had just, just sort of eyeballing it, yeah. guesstimated $7,000. So yeah. I was pretty close. Aurora wouldn't sell cricket. And then Croesus arrived. And Croesus arrived, and this guy sort of Hello. skedaddled. They, he was trying to get them to go into a dark alley with him, to like make this deal more privately. <laughs> and then Croesus arrived, and the next thing they knew, he, they, he was gone. Well, we were sort of disappointed because we were interested in his proposition for the smuggling stuff into the Empire of Flowers. Well, we didn't know smuggling even at the time. It was just, you know, we wanted you to, I wanted you to courier this package. Yeah. So that deal sort of fell through. Uh, <coughs> there was another guy. There was lots of different times. There was that guy. That happened first, and then there was the thing with the guy who hated the Eve. Then you went, there's a lot of, yeah, just lots of stuff that happened. You're lots definitely of, doing a good job avoiding any adventure. We yeah, were, that, we were, I, well, I was sort of interested in the, in the, get this package to the Empire of Flowers thing. Mm. Tim's description, I heard him describing the adventure yesterday, and he said, yep, yeah, well, the best description is, we successfully avoided all of John's plot hooks. Mm. Plot hook after plot hook came along. We were, we were all like, no, we'd rather talk to that random urchin NPC that, uh, yeah. There was a lot of that. Uh, so Robin, as Aurora, would often say, we don't need to role play this, but I'd chat this guy up and find out all about him and find out about his grandmother. Oh, that's right, when she left Bark here, she said, is it okay when I'm in the city if I visit your grandmother? Because she seems like such a nice lady. Mm-hmm. That really, in a lot of ways, sure. describes the adventure. The um, each, each party member trying to uh, explain and enforce their bizarre worldview on everyone else. <laughs> no. Every, every time we encounter someone, Aurora tried to befriend them, and Cricket tried to convince them that the Eve weren't bad, and Croesus told them all about the dream, and it actually ended up the most rational person in the party is the barbarian. Yeah. He's just like, you know, level-headed. You're totally that lady from Australia. (laughs) (laughs) No. 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 No, I'm in character. I'm not constantly crystal energy stuff. Anyway, so there was one other major thing that happened. There's this hole in our party. And Shannon was sitting there waiting to fill it. And we kept expecting the encounter with her to come along. And it kept not coming along. Turns out John was waiting for her to make the move and inject herself. And she was planning to do it when we left the city. Which was never going to happen at the rate we were going. Because there's a lot of NPCs to talk to in the city. And all of them need to be convinced that the E aren't all that bad. Uh, so anyway, eventually, uh, when we found out that she was waiting for us to leave the city, we are like, no, it's not going to happen. Just inject yourself. Um, and so we're walking along. I don't think anything else happened before this. Nothing yeah. else comes to mind. Oh, there was a thing where you slept the night and, they, and someone left a note saying... Um, what was it? Oh. It was... Oh, it was 
was something like Cricket, if you betray them, I'll pay you 3,000 gold. Oh, yes, gold that's something. right. Someone slipped Cricket a note that was like, if, if you kill them or something like that, then I'll, I'll give you 3,000 gold. And and so Cricket takes out this secret note and reads it to the party. And it's like, Cricket, if you betray them, I'll give you 3,000 And she started laughing. Uh, yeah. 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 This is such a funny joke. Yes, yeah, so whoever wrote that doesn't get it. <laughs> I, I must explain. <laughs> we have to find who wrote that note <laughs> and, explain. and explain to them why the, the, the error in their approach. <laughs> anyway, so nothing happens. Um, and so then we're walking along, and on the street corner, we pass this um, uh, gnome in, in a full veil and robes and all that kind of stuff. Extremely ornate. And she sees us and she goes Shifter, Seder, uh, Oblin, uh, Star. Okay, you're the people. I'm in your party. <laughs> and, and we're like, what? And she's like, I'm in your party now. We're like, no. <laughs> Want to be in our party? No, I am in your party. Mm. <laughs> and we eventually get out of her. Uh, her name is um, I don't even know. something or other. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Serendipity something. Serendipity something. Or Van. Serendipity Van. Gold Strider. Gold, Gold Strider. Gold Stride. I think Gold, Serendipity Van Goldstride Malor. There, that's her name. Serendipity Van Goldstrider Malor. And she insists when you say her name, it has to be the whole thing. You can't just call her Serendipity. So we're going to be calling her Hey You a lot. <laughs> that's what you get. <laughs> so, so you got she claimed that she. Everyone kept asking, why do you want to join our party? And she's she like, saying, no, I'm I don't... in the party. Yeah, <laughs> she said, I don't want to join your party, but I am joining your party. And she said that it was to pr- protect her name. It's to, it's to preserve her, her good name. To which someone responded, hanging out with us is not a good way to preserve your good name. <laughs> it's just, yeah. But... So apparently, a bunch of Warforged came along and told her, we got your name. Uh, and we'll do horrible things to it unless you go join join that party. So you're in that party over there, and that's that's why she knew, you know. Uh, yes, that's the party. Okay. Yeah, and if you remember, and if you remember the gnomes, they're really obsessed with their name, and they yeah. always assassinate each other's yeah. names yeah. and stuff. So. And as I, I was talking to in the car ride on the way back home, I was like, I'm sorry, I know it's important to gnomes and all, but. It really sounds like, it, it, to me, it's exactly the same thing. As if the Warforged come up to me and said, Got your nose! Got your nose! You gotta join that party or I won't give it back! <laughs> so, yeah. And I'm like, no, he doesn't have your nose. It's just his thumb sticking through his fingers. Anyway. Yeah, and she definitely does not seem pleased to be joining the party, especially given we spent like half an hour just with everyone talking at her at once and <laughs> trying to figure out why and as, again, you know, Hank the Barbarian was the only the only level-headed person yep. and everyone else is like... Yep. Yeah, and he should definitely not be the leader. The, um, why did we split up at the end there? Um, at the very end? At the very end. Oh, you, well, you went to different sides of the... You left her one... She said, if you don't let me in your party, I'm just going to follow you. Yeah. But she let you go to the other side of the tavern to discuss. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, at the end of the... Um, near the end of the, of the session, um, mm. Cricket was going to go do something. Oh, you wanted to confer... Oh, you forgot to mention the actual plot. Uh, yeah, we did end up eventually accepting a plot hook after great... That, like, that actually happened. Shoving it in our jaws. That actually happened before meeting Serendipity. And afterwards, they had to go okay Serendipity with that. With ah, uh, right. So we should probably... Right. And so, okay, that. so the, the, the eventual thing we decided to go with... Uh, oh, right, there was that guy with the box. Yeah, Kylenar. Uh, Kylenar Zara 
Chicago, just he's this big Spellblade guy in the cave, and he just came up to him and, and said, "Hello, I'm Kalinar Zarago, and I believe uh, you you guys are in possession of uh, of uh, Barkir's uh, magic map. Is that correct?" And we're like, "No, we don't really want it." <laughs> uh, and he's like, "Oh, but you will have the map, right? You'll have knowledge from it and stuff." And eventually, we sort of admitted, "Okay, maybe we can copy something off of it or something like that." Yeah. Well, uh, it, you, you, you guys said that you were going to have it. Yeah. So he said, he said, all right, you're just the people I'm looking for. I have a <laughs> business proposition for you. Follow me back to my office. And he goes back to his office and they followed him. Yeah. There was a whole lot of office visits during all this. And uh, people won't give you propositions straight out on the street. Actually, that reminds me. I forgot to mention. You got so many free lunches and stuff. <laughs> I, mean, I forgot to mention that uh, like the whole city is sort of like a shanty town, but there's an inner walled city with all the Spellblade people have their offices and it's past like this wall and you go through there and then inside there it's all regimented and clean and, and quiet and nice yeah um so they go to his office and basically there, there is a lot of back and forth but he wants to take them to take this diplomatic diplomatic envoy so it's a sealed container with a diplomatic message in it that they're and they have to take it to Greybridge, which he seemed to know they were already... He knew that they were kind of thinking of going to Greybridge. He didn't explicitly say that, but it was obvious that yeah. he was like, he knew that about them. Yeah. And he wants them to deliver this diplomatic envoy, and he doesn't want to give... He wants it to be, like, super secret, because it's this important message. And he doesn't even want to... He doesn't want to give it to another Spellblade, but he doesn't want to give out the, like, the location of the Spellblade. The place we're delivering it to. Yeah. So, so he's going to give a location that's going to work... That's going to show up on uh, their... On that magic map. And uh, that's, yeah. that's the plan. So no, no one will know, unless they happen to know all the details of ancient Ood civilization, where to go. Uh, and so we accept this deal. Uh, and then he starts talking about all the, the 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 penalties under the law if you let this thing fall out of your possession or if you look inside it or whatever. It's like, uh, well, this will be execution, that will be execution, that's ten years in jail. <laughs> and, and I'm like, hold on, hold on, this is suddenly a terrible deal. You know, you're, you're paying us a pit. Bad, bad. No, bad. Cricket, Cricket, in her capacity as party leader, was saying, nope, suddenly, with all those extra conditions, you, you've suddenly made this a very much worse deal. But the rest of the party was not having it. Because that time, Croesus was just like, he, he saw it as like a fulfilling the law of yeah. something. So he's like, I will accept this obligation. It came in this uh, wooden box thing. about this big. Yeah. And uh, so he was accepting it. Yeah. So, and Kirk was like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. This is a terrible deal. Wait a second. Hey, guys, come back. I, ah. At that time, I think Tim was just like, we need to write yeah. out some kind of plot hook and instead so, of avoiding yet so another one. So we hit the worst one. <laughs> It's not that bad. If, uh, if you look inside of it, the punishment is death. Yeah. If you accidentally break it open and you can show that you didn't look inside of it, you're probably going to spend like 30 days in jail. But if it's like you an egregious thing, it could be up ten to years. 10 years. It could be up to 10 years, <laughs> especially if you kind of snuck a piece yeah. at it as you were shoving it in there. It's, it's yeah. you know. No. If someone steals it from you and you can prove that you fought hard to stop it, yeah. then there's no penalty, I guess. Yeah. No. So. The, the moment it looks like that thing's going to get busted open or stolen or something, I'm just torching it and we're going we're gonna to say, well, we did our best, but we had to destroy it. That was interesting because you asked him, if it looks like it's going to fall into the wrong hands, should we let it fall into the wrong hands and destroy it? Yeah. And he thought long and hard about that and then yeah. said, uh, destroy it. Yeah. And there was something kind of weird about that. Yeah. And there was also some insight checks that were made. He, he seemed on the level. He, he, they asked if he was friends with Spark here, like he was trying to betray him over the map. And he was like, well, we're acquaintances. We, you know, like, we like each other, but we're not really friends. And that was all on the level. The only thing that was kind of weird was that um, his reason for needing them to have the map was kind of sketchy. Like, yeah, yeah, it was kind of dumb. That... Oh, and, yeah, and whenever they brought that up, he tried to avoid yeah. that topic of conversation. Yeah. So there's something weird about that. But yeah, he seems this, this generally whole, on the level. Cricket really is suspicious of this whole deal. She thinks it's a bad idea. But it's the one the party wanted. So, uh, anyway, she, she was more interested in finding that guy that wanted to 
courier that package the Empire of Flowers. Yes. Uh, and then later on, um, after we've got Serendipity in the party, yeah, because you went back to that guy Sorry. to check who the was Serendipity, Van Gogh, Strider, Malor. Okay. After, that gnome. <laughs> after the, after uh, she after that gnome joined the party, uh, they went they went back to uh, Kylanar uh, Zarago to confirm it was okay. We, we split up. Though. Yeah, two yeah. of them went on to yeah. Uh, Cricket, you and Croesus. Cricket decided that as party leader, she was going to go and check, uh, and the rest of the party would stay with that gnome. <laughs> And it's uh, okay to call her serendipity because we're not in character right now. Anyway, she can't do anything about it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I also don't like her. So. <laughs> anyway, um, so the rest, so the rest of the party, Cricket encouraged Hank to bond with with the note mm-hmm. uh, because Cricket felt that Hank had the most in common with her. They both have parents. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. That was the main thing. But anyway, uh, and so Cricket was going to go and talk with Valor. And since people kept on offering to buy Cricket, and because I had mentioned that technically Cricket is not, that the, the paperwork isn't done for Cricket, you know, to be properly owned by the party, so technically she could be stolen away. Right. Um, the rest of the party insisted someone had to go with Cricket, which was fine. So Croesus went with Cricket. Uh, and we bumped into that guy again. Uh, and, sorry, how did that go? Well, he yeah. he came up and saw you were there um, and saw you were with Croesus. Yeah. So he, I think this is how he started, but in the end, Croesus was saying he didn't own you. Yeah. And, and so I was he was get- saying, so you renounce all rights over this property, right? Yeah. And so I got a little bit nervous there. Um, and that's that's actually where I was worried I was blocking because, uh, you know, I was saying, well, no, actually, the rest of the party also owns me and stuff like that. Uh, and I didn't know exactly where John was going with this. He really wanted, you know, this guy to grab cricket or something like that. I wasn't really going anywhere okay, with it. Okay. I, I, was just, I was just. Good. He, he was just trying to. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, if if he'd like uh, captured cricket, then that would have been an interesting situation to be in. Uh, but if it's just a matter of arguing with her about it, she's like, no, no, I'm still with those guys. I mean, if he got away with it, he would yeah. have tried to take you. But I assume it would. Be, yeah. It would ultimately. He would have had combat, to. Which, he'd have to fight Croesus. Which, and, I, which oh, I would have actually preferred not to do. Just because it's a combat that only half the parties did. Yeah. So I actually would have preferred that not to happen. Yeah. But that was what he was going for. Yeah. I'm sure the guy doesn't want to fight in the middle of Valnay. Well, it was, yeah. it was nice, too. So there wasn't many people around. And it was... Still, I mean, there's Valnay a bunch was, of magical spell Yeah. In the city. It's pretty lawless outside oh, the main okay. city, though. Yeah. So we, we did go and check with Bark here, and he was okay with it. Yeah, he just um, needs her to come in and, and agree to the same contract, basically. Yeah. And he'll give her he'll give her a share up front too. They, they get they got not Bark here, but the other guy. Oh, sorry, not Bark here. Yeah. The, oh, right, the one with uh, the the thing. Art. Yeah. Uh, and then. Um, you guys yeah. were all back at the end no, discussing. Yeah, and like, didn't didn't some like Skullblade approach us or something? Oh, right. So and he told you, us. No, you told Kylanar. We told Kylanar. Corsus mentioned to Kylanar that this, that this guy. guy was trying to sell, trying to get this package. And he's like, really? Package? What did it look like? And he described yeah. it. And he's like, really? That sounds like the, that, the package that was stolen last week. Here, come with me down to the to the guard yeah. station. Uh, so he heads off down to the guard station and then go with him. Yeah, Cricket and Corsus go with him. Yeah. And, um, and down at the guard station, we're told uh, that uh, there had been a theft of some magical items uh, related to uh, pain slave bonding. Uh, and uh, this guy was probably, the, the, they didn't have a description of the guy that had stolen it, but this was probably the guy. And, you know, could you give us a description? And, and Cricket, uh, upon hearing this, was just like, we have to find him and kill him. <laughs> this, is, this is like... She'd been really eager to take this... She thought that was the best quest hook that kept coming up over and over again. It was yeah. like, let's courier this package to the... He's like, nope, now we now we have to find that guy and, and bring him to justice. Hard, brutal, flaming justice. <laughs> um, so yeah, we gave him the description. Uh, and... Yeah. And went 
like the end to sort of they decide to set up a yeah. sting, I think. If that guy shows up again, Cricket's ripping his lips off. Yeah. yeah. There, there's a bounty on him, like there's a bounty alive and a bounty dead and a bounty for the back. Yeah. So they were just discussing setting up a sting back in the end. Yeah. yeah. When suddenly out on the street someone starts shouting, Help! Help! Yeah. And that was where we ended the session. Yeah. So but um, so no combat this session. No, no combat this session. What uh, what is the no? <laughs> she's a wizard. So she's got a twenty-one int. Uh, so I was briefly concerned. Oh, you know, I'm no longer the smartest in the party, but it, it doesn't matter because nobody's going to do what she says anyway. <laughs> uh, so I'm still with the highest. She's ingratiated herself in the party. No, not, she has no. Yeah, not ingratiated. No, she has <laughs> described at great length what she thinks of each of us uh, uh, and how low a regard she holds us all in. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, Describe that part. Oh yeah, she, she said no. Mm. I don't know if she actually did that or not, but I, that's it was it was heavily implied. But, she, uh, she she did not like to be touched. Just, please stay away. You know, don't <laughs> actually touch my clothing. Well, and of course, she has a veil. Yes. And said if I were to remove the veil, my beauty would blind you. Yeah. And 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 Kroos is like, oh, good thing you've got that on. <laughs> <laughs> Later, Aurora wanted to look, to look under her veil, and she was greatly offended. Yeah. But, she, she basically said, if you don't let me join the party, I'm just going to follow you. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, we've got a gnomish wizard in the party. Or magician, as Aurora called her. And then it's just like, oh, that's so offensive. <laughs> Magicians are tricksters. So, yeah. Well, we, you have a pet gnome. We have a, tr- a very traditionalist gnome. You have a pet gnome. Yeah. He follows you around. Who has joined our party. Uh. And, yeah, that would only work with our party. The like, you know, I'm in your party now. It's, okay. Yeah, it's true, because they're just, they're just like, so accepting. Yeah. I was saying, like, afterwards, I should have some hobo witness. I'd be like, yeah, I'm in your party, too. I'm coming along. You can't stop me. i got a cut of the gold, right? I would explain to him what happened the last time commoners joined our party. <laughs> So, so yeah, our quests that we have, you know, clicked accept on. Yeah. Uh, there's the, the, the diplomatic courier thing that's very suspicious and weird that Cricket is very uncertain about. Are you sure, that's not the parcel that was stolen. No, this is a different parcel. Okay. Well, and when they when they did incite that guy, he seemed very on the level in general. There was just a couple yeah. of points of suspicion. Yeah. There was he, he minimized. He would always try to avoid talking about the map and why he, why that was a good idea. Yeah. Um, and his his the length of time it took him to, to decide whether it should be destroyed or let fall into the wrong hands was kind of weird. But I mean that might be reasonable too. Yeah. So other than that, everything seems to be on the level. So, so we accepted that one. Um, we have. And Cricket was very like, ah, it's a bad idea. We shouldn't have done that. Um, and then there was the one about the pain slavery equipment, and Cricket's like really gung ho about that one. Um, and oh, there was, was there, was, there was another one, wasn't there? Was there? No. No, there was just a guy who offered to buy Cricket for yeah. illicit purposes. Yeah. I don't know. For some reason, I thought there was another thing we were doing. Oh well. And of you course, the, 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 the what? You might be thinking of the map in general. Yeah. Okay, so I to go get it. Yeah. And use it to hide things in the ether. We really don't want that map. <laughs> It's, it's I mean, did he tell you where in the Ugaroons you're supposed to hide it? Or, like, oh, yeah, no, we're, no, we're, we're supposed to meet I forgot to, I forgot to do that in session, but he oh, would have yeah. told you, yeah. yeah okay. He'll give you instructions. Actually, he probably will give you... I'll talk about this next time, but I think he'll give you instructions on what to do once you get to Greybridge in a separate sealed envelope. Uh-huh. And then you'll open that, look at the map, figure out where to go. <laughs> That's what he would have done, uh-huh. but I forgot to mention that. Uh-huh. The secret instructions are probably be like, ha ha, got you out of Valneva with minimal damage. <laughs> well, things are getting very complicated now. Uh, we reached the, the city of Valneva, uh, whereupon we started making various contacts with people around the city trying to give us bounties and stuff like that. And, and it's all quite normal for the city, apparently. Um, we 
tried to make a deal for the cortex that we got at the uh, at the ruins, um, and it turned out to be a very strange deal indeed, uh, wherein we were trying to give everything away. Uh, but I think we, we wound up with a, a good deal there, uh, even though we tried to give everything away. Uh, and then people came to us wanting us to courier various packages around, and and they tried to steal me away, and tried to convince me I wasn't owned, and oh, very complicated there. But then, strangest of all, uh, this gnome, uh, by the name of Serendipity Ven uh, Gold Strider uh, Melora, she joined our party. Uh, we apparently had no say in this. She just stepped up and said she was in our party, because she had to be. Uh, we managed to prize out for some explanation for this. It's those Warforged again. Sadly, it looks like we are they're not done with us. I thought we were done with them. But no, they're not done with us. They, they found her, and they blackmailed her somehow, uh, telling her that she had to join our party. Uh, so there's a great deal of confusion about that. That's very complicated. Uh, if she's joining the party, does she have a share in ownership of me? Not currently. Perhaps later. Uh, then, in the midst of all this, one of the people that kept accosting us, trying to, to get us to deliver a package to the Empire, he turns out uh, to be the subject of a bounty. Uh, it seems he's trying to smuggle some kind of magical item involved in pain slavery. Well, fortunately, the rest of the party was in, as incensed as I was, and it looks like we're going to put out a sting on him. That will be very, very, very pleasing. After all this complexity, at least something of moral clarity, something straightforward, something that's definitely right. Slavery is wrong. We have to stop this. Then we can figure out who is with whom and where we're going and all that sort of stuff. Um, this is just a little addendum from Cricket there. Uh, you can actually assume that all satyrs are the same. That's uh, one exception there. So, this gnome comes up to us on the street as we return from some errands and she insists on joining us just out of the blue. And I don't know who she is. She claims to know us. I have no idea how. I tried asking her, but everybody else was asking much more distracting questions, so I didn't seem to get through to her too much, but um, I don't know. I don't really understand this whole gnome business with names and how somebody can steal their name. It makes no sense to me, but this is apparently important to her, and she thinks that we're good adventurers or something and wants us to help her with this and she insists on joining us we don't seem to have any choice in the matter she's just gonna follow us along anyway and I don't know I guess we're stuck with her so hopefully this will turn out better than I expect Dear Diary today we finally came to the city Oh, it's a wondrous place. So many people. I met the dearest little boy with the biggest eyes, and he stole something from me, and it was so precious. I know that he must have really needed it. Oh, poor little lamb. I think his name was probably Timmy. Also, we met this gentleman in this shop where we were shopping, um, Cricket and I, and he seemed to have a real strong feeling against Eve and everyone related to Eve. Um, but Cricket and I talked to him and this other rather grumpy gentleman in the corner, and we spoke to them and explained um, that you can't assume that everyone from a culture or a race or whatever are all the same, because there's great variety in personality and experience, and, you know, I think that sometimes people act the way that we treat them. So if you treat someone with fierce negativity, they might fulfill that expectation. But if rather, if rather you treat them with integrity and respect, then they might surprise you. 
course, they might just cut your head off, but that's a risk I'm willing to take. I guess if I didn't know I was just going to wake up under a tree, um, I might not be so willing. I can definitely understand why people like Hank are so much more suspicious of strangers. Oh, and Croesus gave me the most wonderful compliment. It's been a wonderful day. Oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to be a policeman like those great big constructs in the dream earlier that incarcerated me for breaking the law, except I didn't really break the law. That was other people who ate the food from Salty Fatty Tasty. But but now, now I'm going to be a real policeman in this dream. It's turning into a police dream, and we're going to catch a smuggler and a thief, and he's been making pain slaves, and we're going to catch him. And we're going to get a gnome to help us. Her name is... Selenity Van... Goldhammer Malore. <sighs> I'm here. Like, the Warforge, that Warforge said I had to. And I'm at the party. And... They're... Letting me join them? Like they have a choice. They're kind of. They're kind of morons. <laughs> they have no sense of. Ooh, I might be someone dangerous. Or. And. Ooh. They're kind of stupid.